Hi folks, it's uh, Chet from Tag Along with Chet. Well, uh, we're uh, back at the hangar. Uh, I was planning on going flying, but uh, it's getting a little later on in the afternoon now, so uh, I think what we're going to end up doing is uh, just going to show you uh, how I preheat my aircraft. Now, uh, fortunately, uh, as you know, I've got mine inside, and uh, I have uh, different ways of doing it now, uh, as opposed to uh, the way in which I used to have to do it, which was, um, well, being in the outside uh, elements, it, it was a bit of a challenge. I tried to develop the best way of doing it here uh, inside and uh, came up with all sorts of uh, fancy ideas, and none of them which really uh, worked out too well for me. So I've come to the conclusion uh, the simplest way is probably the best way. Uh, I'll show you what I tried to do here. Okay, uh, what we have here is a Remington 70,000 BTU heater. Now it runs on kerosene, uh, which is in this tank down below here. And of course it runs off AC power, which I now have lots of, uh, considering the fact that I uh, now have my own solar system set up in the, uh, in the hangar. So having 120 volts really helps, uh, and when you want to preheat the aircraft, uh, it's just a matter of uh, plugging this one in and uh, preheating the aircraft. Now, uh, what I originally was planning on doing is, uh, on the front of this, where the heat blasts out, I had all types of uh, things I was going to attach to this, even though the directions uh, state that uh, you're not to attach anything uh, to the uh, actual uh, unit itself. I had uh, this, for example. Well, uh, with this here uh, ducting, which I was going to attach to the front, of the uh, unit and then attach this so that I could put that gooseneck into the uh, aircraft and I'll show you what the problems I uh, ran into with this. Okay folks, so uh, this is what I ended up doing. I uh, opened up the cowling And originally what I had planned was to use the hose, that metal silver thing, and stick it underneath the aircraft and bring it up from there. Unfortunately I have a winter kit underneath here which has uh, restricted the, the area which is normally open underneath the cowling uh, or in the cowling here and it's only about, oh I don't know, four or five inches wide. So that means I had to depress the tube to stick it in there. It became a real pain. And then as soon as you restrict the flow, the unit, it'll shut off. It, uh, it won't, won't take any flow restriction at all. As soon as you start doing something to hamper the, the power of the fan in that unit, it'll just shut off. And that's obviously so for safety reasons. The other option I had was to put it in the front right here but again it was the same situation I had to restrict the opening and it just became a real pain and it was hanging on to this unit and everything was kind of anyway it just didn't work so what I ended up doing was the following I took this unit here I placed it on my collapsible workbench which I put on a set of rollers. I picked those up from Princess Auto in, uh, in Calgary. They were on sale for 19 bucks. Came complete with the wheels and everything else. And then I just made it large enough so that the work table fit on this, then I put this on top of that, and now I have a unit which is on wheels. And I can just wheel it up 
So there we are, we can just wheel it right to the aircraft. Okay, so as you can see, I got it all plugged in. I'm just running a, an extension cord from my uh, workbench. <laughs> hi there, Piper, how are you doing? Hey, did you come to say hi? Hey, there, yeah, how are you? Okay, I'm gonna make a little noise here now. We uh, just basically click it on. I've got it all plugged in out here. So uh, when we click it on, you're gonna hear one heck of a racket here. So uh, just <laughs> cover your ears. Lights go on. standing about four feet away from it here right now and uh, I'll tell you it's nice and warm. This unit, um, like I mentioned, was bought at Canadian Tire, but it runs on about 16, I guess about 16 liters, 15 liters of uh, kerosene, which you can purchase at uh, at Canadian Tire and uh, Home Depot and uh, most, most hardware stores. Even Walmart sells it in the camping uh, supply area for around 14, 15 bucks. Uh, which is rather expensive, I find, uh, because all it is is, uh, well, it's uh, more, more of a pure form of diesel fuel. The lowest temperature that I've used while I was in the hangar was uh, 18 below. That's centigrade. Now, I don't know what it was like outside, but uh, it must have been pretty cool outside as well. So, uh, probably somewhat colder, but now, mind you, this, uh, this hangar, as you can tell, is not heated or it's not heated, uh, nor is it insulated. So uh, maybe when the next lotto comes in or something like that, uh, I'll be able to insulate it. Uh, but uh, I can't afford the 15, 20,000 bucks it's gonna cost me to uh, do the proper insulation for this. I, I can't put foam in it, uh, and I think that's gonna cost me about eight or $9,000. But then again, uh, it uh, won't have a ceiling. The foam will be uh, right up to the peak. And uh, so that's a lot of area to heat actually. After preheating the engine for about 15 or 20 minutes what I normally do is I'll take the prop and I'll give it a few cranks through kind of circulate the oil through the cylinders and uh, give it a chance to warm up a bit and I think during that time when I was 18 below while I was preheating it I let it run for about oh 30 35 minutes and during that time I would uh, change the uh, position of this uh, heater and I'd have it directing the uh, the hot air elsewhere on the engine and as a matter of fact it'll get warm enough that uh, uh, the cylinder head covers uh, would be too hot to touch actually which they normally would be if the engine was running by the time I got the aircraft out after uh, probably was a little bit more than 35 minutes by the time I got the hangar door open and the airplane out and I got in ready to start flicked on the switches and my uh, LED display for my oil temperature uh, was reading in the mid 60s that's Fahrenheit and that's quite adequate uh, and I just leave it at a low RPM uh, below a thousand and then gradually let it warm up until I get into the 70s and then I would taxi out to the ramp and by that time the temperatures were good enough to do a run-up and then off I'd go. During the time that I uh, have this engine preheating I have other things to do. I get the cabin already inside. I do my uh, pre-flight. Oh. That's what I was hitting. <laughs> okay. So I, I do my pre-flight and of course I can do that uh, out of the elements so I don't have to crawl around on ice and snow down below the wing uh, when I check the brakes and the uh, and the uh, the fuel uh, drain the fuel and stuff like that well that's about it folks thanks for uh, watching and uh, 
if you uh, so desire to subscribe to the channel uh, there's a uh, little subscribe button down the bottom right when you're watching it's down there somewhere there yeah right right down there it says subscribe and uh, usually somewhere along there there's a picture of my face on it just click on that and there's also a little bell on there uh, I don't know if you noticed that but uh, there's a little bell and if you click that little bell uh, what it'll do it'll send you all the uh, latest um, updates that I have uh, latest videos that I post and uh, you'll be uh, advised by email that there's a new uh, uh, vlog out so again, uh, folks, uh, thanks for uh, watching and uh, we'll see you the next time. Bye for now.